chapter seven, we're going to go on to our second agenda item, and that is a joint meeting with the zoning board. So the zoning board is going to open their their meeting. Okay, uh, the zoning board of appeals would like to open a meeting uh, the town of Deerfield on August fifth at seven p.m. at the Deerfield Town Hall on the request of Richard and I'll, I apologize, but uh, Sarsky or uh, Walters Propane for a special permit pursuant to thirty three hundred of the zoning board of appeal bylaws. Uh, locating at 236 Greenfield Road, uh, and the location is com commercially zoned District C2, and um, so we're going to open this up. Prior to us getting into debate, I just we have two other hearings this evening, um, Mr. Uh, Yankowski and then Pila, Mr. Pila. We're going to do this one, and then we're going to go into the, with, with you folks, we're going into the kitchen uh, once we finish this joint meeting. John, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be here for a little while on this meeting. Then you and then Mr. Pila, we're gonna have another meeting in the in the back room. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to publicly declare that uh, I am a customer of Walters Propane. And uh, before we start the hearing, if anybody objects to my participating, I'll be glad to step aside. Uh, but the, I think I make five, and I think you need uh, me to participate. So, can you uh, be can you be fair and unbiased? Try. Okay. I also am a customer. Is that the same? Can you be fair and unbiased? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not done. Go ahead. And the Yankowskis, Mrs. Yankowski, is my son John's godmother. So I don't know if I have a problem in there. I just want it on the table. Okay. When we go into that one, we'll we'll deal with that okay. one. Did okay. you say Mr. Yankowski is your son's godmother? His wife. Oh, his wife. Okay. okay. All right. I just want to clarify. You weren't listening very well. You were too wrapped up in ice cream, John. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to clarify that. So, right. Just for the record, let me officially read this uh, from the plan planning board, the notice of joint public hearing. Notice is hereby given, this was all posted as well. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on August 5th. 2013 at 7 o'clock at the Deerfield Town Hall on the request received from Richard Streikars. Streikar. Thank you. Um, DBA Walters Propane for site plan review pursuant to section 5400 of the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws regarding his plans to relocate his business to 236 Greenfield Road, um, Assessor's Map 130, 123, Lot 23. The location is zoned Commercial District, Commercial District 2. The project includes construction of a 3,600 square foot building, which includes a garage, office, and storage. Also outside propane storage with security fencing, small customer parking area, employee parking. Completion of the bridge crossing, gravel stone driveway, stormwater bioretention, water quality swale, landscaping, landscape screening, a new septic system, and water and electrical services. And this uh, public hearing is held jointly uh, with the ZBA. So, are we ready to bring them forward and hear about it? If you'd like, or would you like to do an introduction? Is that? Oh, thank you. Good idea. So, well, just to introduce ourselves to the to folks in the, each of the boards. Bob Decker. Ed Wise. Ron Bahan, which chairperson? Chris Bichette. Ben Wadham. John Baronis. And so this is the planning board. The planning board it starts here. <laughs> I'm across that line. John, you're on the line there, John. John Wade, I'm the chair. Max Andes. Paul Ellis. Roger Sadowski. So we uh, we have a quorum. You have a quorum. Yep. I, I should also maybe apologize. Our two members that aren't here happen to be female, because it looks like we can have quite a bit of males up here. And are missing. Yes. <laughs> so we hope there's as well. Some might, some more might be coming. Well, they could show up later. I, 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 you know, um, <laughs> Rachel may change your mind. She may be watching, Rachel. <laughs> So, um, so we've received, at our last month's planning board, we had an overview of this project, uh, and we asked some questions, but we wanted a lot, uh, we needed some more information, and so that's what this public hearing's about. So we'll hear from the uh, requesters, and then, oh, thank you. Can I introduce, a, we should uh, clarify who else is here to maybe help out. So Pat Smith from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, uh, we've hired her to look over the site plan review, and she's also made some comments and then uh, uh, Dick is here as our building, what do we call him? 
Building Commissioner. Enforcement Officer, uh, Inspector. Um, ben Burns, Commission, uh, Conservation. Oh, good. All right. So we've got uh, quite a few other people here to help out with this. Um, and we should be passing around a sign in sheet. Going around the crowd now, and it'll come up to you guys Excellent. Thank you, Pat. All right. So this has, uh, so they submitted a, a site plan review and some other uh, documentation. We sent it out to Tie and Bond, which is the town's uh, peer reviewer. We got comments from them. We also sent it out to the Council of Governments. Uh, Pat Smith has uh, given comments. I think they all went. Did they all get to you, Tony, at some point? I did. My name is uh, Anthony yep. Wojcicki. I'm the senior engineer at SPD Associates in Greenfield. And I'm here on behalf of Walters Propane. I'm not sure if you have a secretary. Right, thank, you. thank you. I'll give you my card. And I don't know if you need it or not. So we'd like to just get a, a quick uh, get a quick summary of the project, and then really get into the um, what the peer review and our comments we, were, we and then get also public comment on it. Do we also have somebody from Weston Sampson here? You mean um, I was told that there was going to be Diane Bond. Diane Bond. I mean, yes. Oh, great. Gene Christie. From yes, Gene. All right. I knew I recognized you. I'm like, where's she from? So. Um, Excellent. So we're going to have some experts here, and we just get to sit back maybe and, and uh, answer your question. Yes, I did receive um, my bond comments last Wednesday, and I received the cards comments tonight. And so um, you've seen the overview, and I'd like to give a presentation for the ZBA yep. and um, and the late notice of getting those comments and so forth, I've addressed some of the comments from Ty and Bond. I haven't had a chance to review the COG comments, so what we would, would have liked to do is to complete all of that and have responses and approvals from everybody before we brought everybody together, but we're just, that's not going to happen, so we're going to have to probably go forward with a continuance on this so that will give me time to address all of those issues, yep. come back, um, to you folks at a later date and, and hopefully answer any questions from the board's public and, and, and therefore finalize this and, and get a decision from everyone. Uh, we really appreciate Is there anybody here from any of the applicants? You're... No, I don't think so. No. All right. Um, the last meeting, uh, we Greg was here mm -hmm. the last meeting, right? Yes. Greg Garner, who's the owner of the property. And then I, did we meet someone from Walters Propane at one of our meetings? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. we, but we do know that Tony's been, you know, representing them and doing a good job. So, yes, and so, <clears throat> Gene and Pat, do you especially want to come up and make sure you can see all this? This is also a public thing, so it should be addressed to the public as well. Um, is there? Are they going to be able to pick that up on that camera? You think? Yeah, the camera should get it. As everyone knows, so Walters Propane has a license for the town of Deerfield to operate, and they're operating a piece of property that Greg Gardner owns uh, over in this section here. They're looking to relocate their business across routes 5 and 10 to 236 Greenfield Road. Um, in order to do that, we have to come before both boards for special permit site plan review. And we're also before the Conservation Commission uh, because we're in close proximity to an uh, intermittent stream of wetlands. We've um, originally, Greg Gardner brought this property forward so that we could get uh, a crossing across the intermittent stream. This was a few years ago, and be able to market the property. That was approved, and we're almost to the point of, of getting sign off on the original crossing. We were instructed. Uh, in conversations with DEP to hold on the certificate of compliance until we are about ready to approve um, a new notice of intent for Walter's relocation. So that's where we are with the Conservation Commission. The project is pretty, this is an existing condition plan that shows the intermittent stream, the existing bridge crossing as it is today. We do have a, a permit with Mass DOT for that um, driveway opening. We will, once we get through approvals with the town, have to go back to them 
and amend our permit to let them know what the business is. Essentially, any time you make a change to land use with Mass DOT, you have to amend your permit because you want to make sure that you're not increasing traffic or causing an additional impact to their state highway system. Tony, what's the approximate width of that bridge? Um, I think it's 20 feet. 20 feet? Yeah. And it does have a, a weight limit? Um, actually, that was a, a comment talk, talking with the um, fire chief. Uh, he was concerned about the structural uh, capacity of that bridge. And um, Dave Reeland is our structural engineer on the project. We submitted a letter from him uh, designed to H20 loading. Actually, there's more than one criteria that they're designed to from SDOT. So the town does have a copy of that letter. You should have it if you've got the package from, from the ladies in the office. But it describes the calculations used in that and should satisfy uh, the DPW and uh, emergency vehicle crossing. Okay. So that's the existing conditions of the property. You can see that why we're dealing with Conservation Commission, it's within 100 feet uh, of the intermittent stream. So almost the entire lot is, is under their purview. Simply put, uh, if you read the project description on what Walter's propane is about, it's been around for 65 years, 45, 65 years. And essentially what they do, they have three different bottle types, and they store empty bottles within their, their fenced location. They bring them to commercial businesses and to, um, and to residences. <coughs> I think they're somewhere... give you an idea of the size of these bottles. You should have pictures in your submittal package also. We're not changing the type of business that he's doing, but uh, there are 120 gallon, 50 gallon, and 24 gallon um, tanks. And those will be located in the fenced enclosure here, just like he has across the street. They're empty bottles. He takes, he delivers those to a customer, and then through the use of his three propane trucks where the propane where he actually keeps propane he goes off-site to a distribution facility to fill the the truck mounted <coughs> tanks so he then can distribute to his customers so there was question from the town that this might be a, a, a propane distribution facility it was really not the only reason why I say that is because if it was it would trigger different types of stormwater um, requirements here we have to do we'd have to do some additional pretreatment and our interpretation of the code in that this doesn't meet that standard it's more uh, it's it's a propane servicing business uh, to uh, to uh, um, really describe what the business is the other thing that with this um, with this project besides storing it in the future he wants to build he thinks he wants to build a small butler building here it's about 3,600 square feet where you have two garage bays, an office, and then some you know, dry storage. I don't know where you put in your you know, office products and things like that, whatever he needs to run his business. And, um, but this is a future thing. I always instruct my clients if they're coming before boards to do development permit approvals, if they try to show stuff, show everything that you want to do so that the boards get an idea of what your business is going to look like. And most of the time in dealing with stormwater, they want to know everything about it. They don't want you to come back and do a little phase and then do another little phase and another little phase because they, they really frown upon that. So that's why it's there. This probably, once we get our permit, they're not going to go right out and build this. So therefore, a question came up about whether we should have had our architecture because in a, typically when you're coming from site plan reviews and stuff, you've got a building. You want to build that and then your associated parking do it. In this case, that's, that is not the case. This building will be future. It will be similar to what Greg has behind um, what, where, where he's storing his propane today. It's going to be a butler building with two garage doors and then a man door to get in. So what we'll do, I don't have it tonight, um, but what we'll do to try to satisfy that comment is just give you some pictures of what it is. It'll meet the height requirements and everything in the zoning that is there. And our hopes is that you'll be able to approve this under this scenario and then allow the building official, when they come in for building permit, Commission a building permit if it meets all of that criteria. Now, if it's over the criteria allowed for height and things like that, obviously we would have to come back to the boards for that. Uh, we do show some parking, one ADA parking space. There's a little bit of pavement in front, an apron to the, the building. This is all gravel, across the bridge is gravel. There's an existing paved apron out front on 5 and 10. That's a requirement of Madison too. 
there's no sewer out there, so we do have a new septic system that we designed that goes over on this side. Uh, it will be um, to a tank pumped over to this area. We haven't gone to the Board of Health to get that approved yet. Makes no sense to do that until we get our development permits from both boards. <coughs> when we did the crossing, we got permitted to do a, a horizontal drilled a two inch water line to, cement, to supply domestic water to this. A comment came up that we don't show the erosion control. I'll revise the drawings to show the erosion control around that. That's more of a conservation issue, but we'll go ahead and do that. It'll be overhead electric to a pole that we'll have here with one security light. That pole will be there to allow for underground burial to serve electric to the building. We are showing some screening along here to hide the fencing from 5 and 10. It's really set back off the road, so you really got to look at it. A uh, question came up in peer review that um, our initial submittal to the planning board, we thought this was all going to be done under planning board, but um, apparently we had to bring the ZBA in for the um, special permit. Uh, I had a proposed entry sign out front in talking with the client, we've since to remove that. We would have needed to get a variance for that just because it's a fairly large right-of-way on 5 and 10, and by the criteria in the town of Deerfield, it has to be set back quite a bit from the right-of-way. This would have forced it down over the bank, made it tall to be able to see it and very close to the wetlands. So we were asking for a variance originally to push it up closer to the right-of-way. But we've since, um, my clients decided not to do that. We, when we resubmitted, um, application to the ZBA, we revised the drawings to remove that sign. So that is not part of the um, our, our request of the boards this evening. So not, no sign at all? No, no entry okay. sign. Yeah. We all heard that. No, no sign, entry signs sign. have been a problem in Deerfield. So oh, I any to... building signs? Um, I don't believe so. I think the signage that we'll have, you'll see in the pictures that we submitted to you because there's requirements of storing, you know, if you have propane tanks on the premises. There's pictures showing the signage that meets the code that they're required to do at the existing business. It will be replicated here. Thank you. So we do have screening. We're proposing screening one thing. The other thing we're going to do is you can see that the sides of the bridge are, are kind of rough at this point. They're going to be capped and there'll be a railing on top and so it'll get finished off as part of this project. No impacts the wetlands or anything. It's just going to clean up that, clean up that bridge crossing. Now for drainage, um, because the planning board is a stormwater authority in town, um, what we've tried to do with this, this is a very small site, but we're trying to meet all the requirements um, of this, even though we don't have the stormwater act, we're exempt because we're filing and going through a notice of intent through the conservation commission. We still look at that, we're looking at the conservation commission and trying to, uh, to satisfy all the requirements with this. We have, essentially, our design is, is we remove the water quality swale here. We're, we're looking at proposed roof runoff, and we decided to change that out to a small bioretention area here. Very little drainage drains that way, but we're catching and hopefully treating the half of the roof that will continue to drain that area. The biggest portion of the drainage, this half of the roof here, and the, the paved area for the um, storage yard and the gravel area here drains down into it looks like two systems, but it's interconnected. It's one system. We're kind of fighting geometry in the, the available space to do all of this stuff on the site. So what we have are two bioretention areas with two deep sunk catch basins. So when runoff drains into the bioretentions, you get your initial treatment in the bioretention. It starts to fill up. It gets over capacity. It'll get up six inches and drain over into a deep sunk catch basin. There's any trash or stuff that might happen to get through the grate gets trapped in the deep sump, builds up in the sump, and then what it does is backfill into these underground chambers. You see them in septic systems, they're the half rounded plastic systems with stone wrapped in blankets and stuff. And so what happens is in the bigger storms, it's going to fill up and fill up these retention basins or these chambers. And then the way we calculate it is very little in a hundred year storm, which is a very, very, very large storm will trickle out over the back end through a, an overflow weir. So that's how the system drains. Everything drains to these two bioretentions. They spill over, get into the two infiltrators, and if they ever back up, it backs out the back end here. It doesn't run down the road or any of that. That's our little outflow. There was a concern that we'd be dry. Even though Greg owns both properties, 
we'd be draining a crosswalk. Well, it's so small. I mean, we could turn it and do this. I think it just added more protection if you don't have a problem with it. I'm going to submit a letter of, of permission for crosswalk drainage from Greg to the board saying that he doesn't have a problem if he sells this property for that to happen. Okay, so that's one way we're looking at that. If it's a real hard one, then we'll, we'll turn it, but I like to have it run out so that it's crossing the contours at the same kind of grade as opposed to pointing and sending it down the hill. Where's the application? Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of the way that we handle the drainage here. It seems to, um, you know, it's, it meets all of the recharge requirements that you have. It's used for attenuation. Um, there's some calculations that I have to do that time bonds asked me to do. I haven't had time to complete those yet. And that's essentially the drainage. In your package, you'll see that we have um, there's details on the, on the uh, infiltrators and things like that. We have the septic system. Like I said, we haven't brought that to the Board of Health yet, but the design is here in case you decide to look at it. I don't do those designs. A colleague of mine does those. And then we have our erosion control. You'll see that this bridge might we might have some heavier stone for the temporary along the bridge just to knock off dirt before get, you get out into the uh, um, five and ten. We also I'm not sure how Greg wants to do it. He may put down some plates. You've seen the ridge plates that knock off. That that might be a better, better way for him to go. With the intermittent stream here, we've got a double row of protection, double state straw bales and and silt fence, or it may be fiber roll and silt fence as protection. Uh, we grab a bag to fly the roll around the, um, uh, the catch basins to protect those, or we may even put in silt sacks. It, it depends on what he wants to do. The grading, we have a minor graded slope in here because we have to pick up the pad of the site because we have separation issues between recharge and groundwater, so we have to lift the site up a little bit to accomplish that. In that, we have a small additional slope that you see we're going to be building it up a little bit. In those areas, I typically put a, a straw blanket on that to, and we seed right over that, and that helps protect it. It causes, it, it prevents uh, slope erosion, gives you more protection on newly graded slopes. So that's the erosion protection on that. Before you go off that page here, Tony. Or excuse me? Before you go off that page, there, it appears that you come in the driveway, there's some parking spaces there. Right in front. And is that some kind of egress going? Yes, it is. There's, um, Greg's reserving an access easement for him to get back to his property over here. That's a good, good point. I forgot to mention that. Now, you mentioned Greg was going to give permission to have the drainage go over on the adjoining piece of property that he. Yeah. It, I would provide you with a letter. On that. But that would that would include a uh, an easement that will be recorded. I don't think you need to do that. Um, if you think we do, we could. In the letter of permission. Um, um, well, we'll the probably put it in a deed when he sells it that he has opportunity to do that. That's, but, that's the one way it's sort of run. Well, around. either an easement or, or it can be restricted in a deed. Otherwise, yeah. people forget fast. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a question that came up in the emergency. I'm not sure if it was a call or time and bond, whether emergency vehicles could maneuver. I think we're 78 or 80 feet in width here. I envision a truck coming across, being able to back up and turn and go out. That's usually a turnaround, a modified turnaround. You'll have a T turnaround. You'll have uh, 60 feet of width with 30 foot. We've got 78 feet of total open area. So there shouldn't be any issues with um, emergency vehicles being able to turn it. That was in a comment that came up from the fire department that I saw. Um, if they would like, we can you know, prove it with some turning templates for them. And that essentially is our small little site to move Walter's propane across the street. Can I ask you a couple of operational questions? Yep. Um, is there any on this property, and I've seen over at Ostermans where they actually burn off tanks. Is that part of this process no, as no, well? Not that I know of. Um, they do go and collect tanks, you know, because tanks will rust over time. What they do, I believe they send them off to a company in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania to recondition tanks. So, you know, when they bring tanks in, there might be a little bit of, of residue gas. I think they just 
because it's gas. They just open the valve and let it, let it. They don't have a way to reclaim that? It's so small, I don't think they do that. I'll have to ask that question specifically to them. But it's just like when you have your, um, you know, your tanks for your, um, your gas grill. Sure. There's always a little tiny bit in, in, in the bottom before you take in. But even those 100 pounders and so forth that he has here? Yeah, I've seen the hundred. I've seen the hundred pounders, and I know that if if I was to, because I have propane from another company, mm -hmm. if I was to be dissatisfied with them or whatever and change my my uh, company, mm -hmm. they'll buy back that tank sixty percent full, mm -hmm. and then they take it back. And like I said, I've driven by Ostermans and I watch it burning in the sky. Yeah, I I'll have to ask that. I don't know that for sure. I, when I was out there talking with them, taking pictures of the sign so I could include, include that with my submittal. I didn't see anything in that. They actually, the vehicle that was there that was taking some of the older rusted tanks to recondition them, um, I, I didn't see any of that going on. But I'll, I'll ask that specific question. They wouldn't have any objection if, if the board, in their wisdom, uh, put a restriction in that they weren't going to be allowed to do that. That's your purview. I don't, I, I'll ask them if he has any issues, but I... I mean, if that's a big concern of the board, I wouldn't think that you would try well, to I mean, if, as an example, if, if I'm working on air conditioners or something, mm -hmm. I have to reclaim that CFC. Oh, yeah. And, right. and I have to have a process to do that. Yeah. I mean, here we're just going to let something off in our atmosphere. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I... For clarification, he will not be filling tanks at that site. That's my understanding. I, I will caveat that when I put that in there. Well, uh, I'm just trying small, to get a little, like, little right, yeah. It does have a he does have a, a small propane tank that he does do the little twenty pound mm -hmm. things, very infrequent, um, for you know your gas grill. Because Ron brought up the fact of Osmonds with burning off, and I, I, I think that's a whole different type of operation. What Osterman does in Sunderland, I'm not sure of that, but I think it is. Um, but clarification on that, maybe. I, I will ask that more. question. I, I wish I knew it, but I don't. We do have a comment in the, from the Council of Governments about that, the whole environmental aspects of it, including the air um, quality around there, uh, release of hazardous materials, and any fire suppression system. The, well, uh, I don't think it's required. Otherwise, they probably have it at their business right now from the fire department. They're fully in compliance at their, their, their place of business across the street. I didn't see any any particular fire suppression. I mean, if it was an enclosed building or something like that, I'm sure that there would be sprinkler requirements in that. But um, he does not store um, store these in these tanks. And like I said, they're, they're empty. He doesn't store them inside. His trucks are outside too, I believe. I don't think they're inside. Now, if the new building, when he goes for building permit, if he elects to put propane, you know, if his trucks where he has propane in those tanks, because that's what he uses to go and and fill up the, the tanks at the businesses, then that's a fire issue that he'll have to go through a building permit time, and he'll have to, I would say, probably have to have um, fire suppression equipment in that new building. So the way I understood this is he has tanks, maybe they're brand new empty tanks, maybe they're used partially full tanks, they go to the residence, yep. he takes his truck, yep. his truck, you, you have no way to fill the truck up on site, the, right. the truck gets filled up at a terminal, yep. Yep. and from the terminal, the truck fills the tanks up at the homeowner's that's correct. location. Okay, that's, businesses, yes. I just want to make sure that yep. I understand. Yep. That's okay. how he does. I, I'm not sure of the place where he goes to fill up, but there are you know, it's George's, and I don't know if Osterman does, has a distribution where you can go and fill it, but he does not do that on site. And then he parks the truck at this facility, though. He'll park the truck at the facility. That those tanks. Now I don't know, you know, whether he's, I'm, I would say that you can't count that he empties the tank every time he goes out. So there, the trucks that do have the tanks, they probably have. Right. Um, but you know, they're all the inspected to be able to go out on the streets and, and so forth. So, and like I said, they're outside. So I, I don't see that as any issue. Uh, Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to operate as he does today. And we're not making any changes. We're just relocating the business. Is there going to be a bulk storage facility there for propane? No. I'm, all he does is has his propane within the trucks that he uses. So he's going propane. to continue to bring his propane in every night and distribute it during the day the next day? I'm not sure if he goes and fills them out in the morning and then goes and distributes, and then there's partially prob I would assume that there's a partially filled tank. I, I no, but what I'm saying is I, I think the practice 
if I understood it right, is they go to Goshen and fill up the tanks, the, pres the truck at present time, okay. and distribute the next day. And I could be corrected. Well, George's is there, I believe. George's propane. So yeah. that, if that's where he gets it, that's how he would do that's, it. I believe so. I, I think that Walter used to get his stuff from Osterman, okay. but he doesn't anymore. Okay. All right? I, I but, but there's not going to be a big no. bulk propane tank. No. There he has, right now over his facility, he has a small tank, which you would see at a... At a you know, it's probably from or something. me to you, and it, it, he uses that to fill the little 20-pound tanks for an RV or for a gas grill or something. But it's it's similar to what thing. you're going to find at Fisher's Garage. Probably, yes. Yeah. Or um, it's probably even smaller than what you'd see in Abishan and Greenfield. I live in Greenfield, so yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, something like that. But yeah, no, it's the, most of the tanks are, that are in that thing are, are reconditioned. Uh, the pictures you see, they, they look brand new, but they're reconditioned tanks. And they're empty. They're ready to go to businesses as he or mm -hmm. residences as. The reason I ask is that a few years ago somebody wanted to locate a bulk storage facility mm -hmm. uh, on North Hillside Road, and the neighbors got very, very upset. And ultimately, I think the applications were withdrawn, and yes. it ended up going to Whateley <coughs> and Stanton. So, but there's no great big bulk storage no. going. No, and if that was the case, we'd probably be into this this additional stormwater treatment. Kind of so basically, you're talking about just moving the operation he presently has over to Greg's onto the other side of the road with the possibility of putting a bigger building in. Well, putting a building in that he can use. I don't believe he uses the building over there. No, but no, something but with like the that. possibility of putting a building in, yeah. and there's no other changes other than crossing over the stream and, yeah. and what have you. Now, is that going to be a, that access road that's going in there? Is he going to own it and Greg keep a right of way to it? I believe well, that's the way, yes. He's bought purchasing this property. Greg is going to reserve an easement over that to get to his other property. And what is the extent of the development potential on the other side where the easement's being reserved? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know how much land is there. Um, we haven't studied anything over there yet, so we don't have uh, a lot of particulars. But no, all of a sudden, it, you get another it's, business you in get there. A, you got a little area here. I don't even know. What is this? 20 stay I Maybe 100 by 100, maybe a little 120 by 100. And that's just finger. <laughs> I, I haven't studied, so there's not there's so not Less much than 12,000 square feet? I, 100 I by 120 would be 12,000 if my math is right. But I'm old. I went to Frontier. I don't even want to comment because I haven't really, I haven't really studied it. I'm, I'm, but, but, but it's fairly small. I mean, he's now, taking up a, a pretty good chunk. Is Greg able to access that property uh, today from his other locations? I believe so. Yeah. I'm not sure he can. Through that swale? No, no. From the back, so he owns property over here. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. better go to this. Side. I think he can. This is his property here. I think he yeah. can access along the back over here to this because this is the other area right here. And why would he? Then why would he need the easement through Walters? I, it's he's the property owner. He might have some vision. I can't speak to that, but he is he's reserving an easement for himself. Okay. It's a deal breaker. What? That easement is a deal breaker. I would say he's a property owner. I wouldn't. If I were him, I wouldn't want to give it up. I mean, I, if I if I spent the money to build a bridge and I had access, and the buyer was willing to negotiate that and give me an access or allow me to have my access, I would keep it. So I'd say Greg probably would not want to give that. But up. it's a really small piece of property. I well, no, but it gives him gives him access to it. And if Walter wants to, or Richard wants to allow him to do that. I, think, I don't see what the issue would be in there. So we have a lot of comments here. Should we get to them? I uh, try to do my best to answer them. I know I Dean, do you want to? A lot of yours overlapped. I don't know. Yeah. Start with Diane Bond there. Thank you. And you did, I know you covered some of these things, but yeah, now I, I, I kind of want to go through the checklist and just check them off. Yeah, so that, okay. uh, um, Again, my name is Jean Christie. I'm a project engineer with Diane Bond. Um, and just to be clear, the town of Greenfield asked you to be the peer review. Yes. It's town of Deerfield. Where do we live now? We're in Deerfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Just yes, remember, we're paying probably. I was trying to get Greenfield to pick up the tab, that's why. <laughs> 
Well, if there's propane's paying. That's true. Um, I believe you all have a copy of our comments. Uh, the first comment um, under special permit site plan review application <coughs> states that the permit application indicates that signage is proposed, but it wasn't shown on the plans or had been indicated on the plans that it had been removed. Um, as of this past Friday, I received a copy of the revised uh, special permit application, which didn't include the signing, so that comment is now not applicable. So we, we do have new dated plans? Is one of these that um, I... It was actually the permit application that I think failed to make it into my inbox. Uh -huh. And I had the old one in my application materials. So. Uh -huh. And there are new plans dated 02 July 13, which would be the operable ones now. Is that correct, Tony, that date? July 3rd? Yeah. July 2, yes, 2013. All right, that's, that's May. That's the revised where you move the sign. I will just note that it's still in the specific description, the, the reference to the sign. We still have May 13th here. Because so. that never got oh, But that's... Yeah. Yeah. But the application... That's de minimis. Yes, yeah, the application is uh, not. Comment number two, um, got into specifics of a special permit application and components listed in the um, bylaw. Uh, the following subjects may require additional language. Traffic flow and safety, including site distance, exiting the site. Um, I believe it's pretty straight, but comment maybe or some additional narrative may be required based on if the board so sees fit. Um, the adequacy of utilities and other public services, specifically the water service. I was concerned more with the um, availability of fire protection water um, for the building um, and, of course, the site given the usage. Tony, do you have a comment on that? Yeah. Well, on, on A, um, on the traffic flow and safety, um, I would just say that this facility is acting like the other facility over there, and that's really more of a mass DOT issue and not a town issue. I would think that the use of, of this as mostly employee is minuscule and won't have an impact. We have great sight distance. 5 and 10 is tangent in both ways. Uh, we don't have anything right there that's blocking view. Um, it should not be an issue from that DOT standpoint. So this, I guess, also brings up the question that, so this is not going to be for a resident to come and fill up their propane tank for their stove. I asked Richard about the 20-pound um, the, the, um, tank for, like, a gas grill or something. Yeah. It's very minuscule, the amount of people that he has coming to fill. It's a small, it's a small tank. I don't know. Greg, you can Absolutely not. That. He doesn't do that. He has one tank he got from um, GR Sunoco. He bought it. He had a tank and rented to him when he went out of business. He took it back. He says, I'll do this. Yeah. Um, number two, let's get back to the flaming off of the... Uh, well, just to, before you leave that one, Mike, so because we might want to put... There might need to be some restriction in this because yep. that gets into the traffic flow and it gets into the parking spaces. If, yeah, if there's any... If it's right now. He come back, maybe, for that. But it's, it's for the amount of use. I mean, we're supplying, we've got one ADA, one, two, three, four, four parking places. If you go and say you were to go to Abishan's or go to any of the gas stations to get a refill on a propane tank, how many people do you see waiting in line to get? Minuscule. The question is if, if people are going to be going in and out of there and they need to park, then we might have to start talking about parking spaces and traffic flow. So if, if they're not going to have that, if they're not going to do that kind of business, that's fine. It just should go on the... That's fine. Put it on a record. He has, absolutely has no desire to do that. No. no desire. That's all. As far as the um, B, adequacy of utilities, we'd like to defer that to the building permit. We're showing this to you that this is a potential. He has no desire to build this right at the very moment. We want the boards to say, yes, we've seen that you've got a 3,600-square-foot potential building here. This will have to get a building permit from the building official. At that time, it will get investigated for fire, um, you know, accessibility, structural, all of the things that happen with a building permit. My client does not want to spend the money to do an architectural study and do all of that stuff at this point. He may never even build it, to be honest with you, depending on cost and that. But to get it into the program now, you boards have a chance to see this, and we'll have an opportunity. We have to go to the building official to get this done. 
And so at that point, if, if, if it comes true that he's going to store something and requires um, fire department requires sprinkler systems or something, in, we'll work with the fire department, we'll work with the water department to get a new um, service put in. It'll be done the same way. It'll be horizontally drilled, and we'll be walking, working with the water superintendent because they have to work with MassDOT to get into the, into the street to make that connection. I've talked to the water department on that already. Tony, he's got too much water line running through there already. It's already done. Well, I, I understand that, but for fire protection, it might need to be a bigger service. I'm not sure. But, but we'll, like we'll putting that, that building in right now on this plan, which I think that's the right way to do it, um, I don't know, but if you're, if you're going to put that building into this mix, I think that you have to have the proper size water service for fire control, maybe two inches big enough. I don't know. I'm not. So you don't need water. It's a dry system. I've been to my shops. Okay. More fire protection in my shops, and you can imagine it's all half of it's yeah, dry. Yeah, you can do dry, yeah. It's, it's all dry. Good it's point. Cheaper. I mean, there, there you go. Yeah, it's definitely cheaper. But we did need to get domestic there, and that's why it was done with Greg's permit originally. So that was a question. So the two inch water service doesn't make a difference for the building. Absolutely not. I guess. No. But I, well, there's plenty of suppressor systems out there. I've got one of my lower, I, uh, a 40 by 60 spray booth. It's a uh, fire marshal shack twice a year. Um, it come, it's all like dry. It's a dry system. <coughs> so if that's the case, then two inch water is. It have enough, didn't have enough water to more go than to the top shop. So I had to do that in the lower shop. It was actually cheaper in the long run than doing off the street with water. Yeah, well, it, it can happen both ways. If you do the design of the building, you're going to have to do hydraulic designs anyway. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so. that all has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Before those you get trucks, a permit. Don't forget, those, those trucks are inspected and like oh, yeah. times a year. Yeah. These trucks don't leak. And that man goes a good business. I tell you, his stuff is nice. He gets a little speck in the windshield when you place it. Okay, so you, you, got, you got B covered. Let's, yeah. let's move forward. Um, number three, section 5430, list of middle components of site plans. Um, the following I did not find included. Paragraph B, building elevations are not provided. We now know that they will not be provided until building Wait, permit is sought. Um, I may suggest that the planning board or ZBA um, includes a condition in their permit about this building and needing to go to building or building inspector coming back to the board if. Um, Dimensional requirements are, or dimension, yes, are exceeded. Um, snow disposal methods are not indicated. I believe there's a note on the plans of where snow will be located, but no additional. Um, I couldn't find it either. Yeah. It was in it's the legend, noted, but, but not yeah. on we'll the. We'll revise the plan yeah. for sure. Okay. I mean, it's going to be a long this area. As long as it's not in wetland resource areas, stormwater management areas. It'll be in the buffer, but not in the stormwater management area. Um, paragraph C, fire protection measures. We discussed that. Paragraph H, one light pole pro is proposed for the project. Is this sufficient for safety and security? No, well, we do have the one pole for if the building doesn't happen. We've got the one pole that will shine in this area. We feel that is adequate for security at, at the level that we're starting with the phase one. If we go ahead and do the building, I would say that we'll have a wall mounted pack over the doors and the man door just for security and for exiting and entering right. mostly the winter time because it'd probably be dark are they, they work, so is, is the FERCOG are you going to talk about lighting yes okay very good I can add it now or we can wait I was All just right. sort of waiting I, I, I read yours and I want to make sure it applies yeah. <laughs> okay and then paragraph K is regarding signage which is now null and void again um, moving on to the stormwater design um Section 5430. Could you just help us? Because this is the, got complicated because of the Conservation Commission and the DEP, and we weren't sure if they needed to go by our stormwater regulations or what. So. Um, it's our opinion that they do need to go by all stormwater regulations, um, and that's what this review has been based on. Um, I don't. I don't see why they wouldn't. I guess. And I, I, if they need more. Information no, it's not, me great, but. it's not our intentions to, to use one or go with the other. We want to comply. Right. The thing is, is this is just something in the regulations that is a little hard to make sense when it's a private. When you look at the subdivision regulations, 
the subdivision regulations are written mostly for a subdivision and a road which you would think was going to be taken over by the town. That's why you see a concrete, uh, you see a, a common piping should be reinforced concrete minimum of 12 inch. Well, this is a private development. The town's not going to have anything to do with this, and to put that in restriction on a private developer seems kind of crazy, in our opinion. We have designed um, uh, HDP pipe, that's a mass DOT approved piping system, and we would think that the, the boards would have give us some discretion to be able to use piping in a private sense, you know, if it's an industry standard, and that's what we're showing. And I guess, I, you know, we don't, I don't have a problem with that. I, I just think that because it does reference the section, um, that maybe a waiver should be requested and granted. You know, it's, HTP pipe is perfectly acceptable. It's size, pipe size um, should be based on the actual flows going through the pipe, not what, I'm, what a regulation says. So I fully support a waiver of those kind of things, um, but I agree that they are approved materials. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, Pat, did you have anything to add to that? Yes, I think I agree that you know it's 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 listed in site plan review as one of the requirements. So I and we I don't think it's specifically listed for the ZBA. So. You, I think, would need to file a formal waiver request to the planning board, and then they could vote that waiver if it's deemed appropriate by the peer review consultant, and then that would just complete the loop for that's, you. Everything would be done appropriately. We, we can do that if I can get the form from you to ask for that. Uh, it's just I don't think it's really a form. form. Just, just, a, just a letter here. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'd like to so you may uh, ask. Yeah, so um, you may, could we use N12 versus RCP? Excuse me. You may ask, can we use N12 versus RCP? I assume his waiver would be specific as to what they wanted to replace. Whatever on the place. Gene yeah. would say yes or no. I'm sorry, I would have put that in my initial thing, but that didn't jump up to me in the subdivision regulations of concrete pipe versus uh, other things. That's very restrictive, and we did, you know, hopefully in your future dealings you may be able to change that to industry standard or something of that nature for private development. Subdivision roads that are going to be taken over would be not an issue. Yeah, we're talking about a small amount of infiltrators. I mean, this is a minimal amount, amount of uh, impact on the environment as far as what groundwater runoff we have, the blacktop. Um, I think we've gone way overboard with our project here, and uh, I would hope the, the planning board would remember that down the road. It really would, because <clears throat> it's costly. Anybody that's doing something small like this. Uh, moving on with number five, the Massachusetts stormwater checklist indicates that a water quality spill is utilized, however, it was not identified in the plans. Tony did explain that it was removed and replaced with a bioretention area. Uh, Massachusetts stormwater standard number one requires calculations proving that stormwater discharges are within permissible um, velocities within, you know, based on these ground cover that it would be discharging to. Um, those calculations weren't specifically provided. Um, but they're, I think, simple enough that we can... Yeah, we'll do that. We, and, and really what happens, I, I assume you were talking about the overflow yes. here. Um, that holds all the water for the 2, 10, 25, 100 yards starts to spill. I'm talking, I remember the calcs, like two hundreds of a CFS. So I didn't supply those because just through inspection in my years of being an engineer, that's not going to cause any erosion. Um, so, but I will calc that and supply it to you. Your draining calculations, do they include um, the 60 by 60 building? Yes, they do. Yeah. And it's in the book that I, uh, you should have gotten uh, or received a stormwater management plan. There's exhibits in the back that shows the flows and, and okay. the mapping on how I thought they were. Thank you. Um, number seven um, pertains to Massachusetts Stormwater Standard number five for land use of higher potential pollutant loads. And um, in my research of what, a, what, a, what one of those land uses is, liquid propane storage is one of those uses. Um, since it is being stored in a truck in some capacity for some amount of time, I do think that um, this standard is applicable in this case. And what this standard does is it increases the amount of water quality volume is required by the project based on the imp impervious area of the project. Um, Looking ahead into the calculations that were provided, 
that volu achieving that volume is not going to be a concern. They will be able to achieve it, um, but I do think it should be added into the calculations. I disagree. I don't think it's a land use of fire pollution. It's not a distribution facility. So, it's yeah, not a distribution facility. In the handbook, it does say liquid propane storage. It doesn't say distribution. Maybe we can talk about liquid propane, what happens if there's a leak of liquid propane, how that would impact stormwater. But she did just say that you meant that anyway, so why? Well, it, it's, we have the volume, but it, it requires me to spend money to show that, I, that, I, that I'm solving 44% more TSS removal before I um, go to the infiltrators. And um, I just disagree with that comment, and we'll have to talk more on that, because what happens if we have a leak in the tank is going to turn to gas, and it's going to go away, and it's not going to impact. I don't know why I haven't talked to the state why they would would even bring this in, except that maybe they believe with a distribution facility of propane, you're going to have a lot of hardscape. That would impact stormwater. Propane is a gas. As soon as it hits the air, it turns to a gas. It's heavier than air, so it'll be along the ground, but it's not going to impact stormwater. So I'm not sure how that is. I'd have to talk to somebody. That's a very good point. And please yeah. understand that our, our bylaws are in line with the state. We didn't just make these up. We didn't. Well, I understand, well, but I think it's. Lots and, and make these up. These it's all open our gas grills up and see where the gas goes. No, no, no. I understand, Greg. It, but but I'm just saying, you know, we, we get a lot of. Uh, um, hardship as a planning board, but but we're we're just being in line with with, with what the state common regulations sense, are. Common sense. Common sense. I think I have to be honest. I think I think we're we're talking about the kind of facility, and um, this is like I said, we're storing empty tanks. I think we need to understand. I'll have to do some research and I'll talk to Gene some more. Maybe talk to Mark Stinson at the state to get a definition. I'll probably I could lose because I work for a private developer, but I just, there's not, gas is not going to cause a problem to stormwater. Hardscape in impervious area is going to cause a problem, so I can only think of a large distribution of propane facility is the amount of hardscape that goes with it. And that's just intuition on what I would think it is. Well, in Deerfield, we, we had two uh, propane facilities in the past. One right in the center of Deerfield, where the old Drosdale uh, home was, and one down the road across from what's now Magic Wings. And in my opinion, there's not a problem with them, so let's get this figured out and let's move forward. I, I wish we could have had this all finalized, but I didn't have time yeah. to get through all of this. So we'll just have to leave that on the table for now and come back to that. Okay. Um, Number eight, an illicit discharge statement is not provided um, in the stormwater management plan. I don't know how exactly how that works in the session. Um, if the statement does need to be provided, given that there is no sanitary sewer. We usually do. It just, the, I don't know if you saw the signed copy. I think the town got a signed copy. If not, we're, we'll bring another one. Yeah, to, there was a copy the, there. It was unsigned, I think, in book okay. distribution. We'll, we'll, yes. we'll take care of that for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, number nine, we've previous, previously discussed the overflow of the infiltration and bioretention areas discharges to the north onto adjacent property. Um, while the property owner is currently the same owner, um, I do suggest that the applicant provide some sort of easement or a, an agreement in perpetuity with a responsible party for maintaining that discharge. Um, it is size for a 100 year storm, likelihood of it used, being used is pretty slim, but um, to close the loop on that whole thing with being on adjacent property, I do think that's the right way to go. Mm -hmm. No, nope, that's fine. We have a game plan that will. Okay. okay. Um, number 10, the proposed infiltration system models subsurface infiltration as well as an infiltration, infiltrating bioretention area. And it's our opinion that this kind of double counts how much infiltration we're getting um, as water flows into the by a retention area and percolates down through the ground, will then get close to this infiltration system, possibly um, limiting the capacity of the soils below. Um, and I think. Hold on a second. 
I think it was not clear the actual size of the fire retention area, if it was just Very this small. size, and if it, it does not, even though the contours do go around this whole area, it's only where it fills up to. Clean the little areas uh, by themselves. I can talk to you we'll more talk about the way you need to yeah, line it. The but, technical stuff we'll. But, but the volume is there. Um, really, when I model it, they don't really model the bioretention as a bioretention. It's really the, the basins mm -hmm. and, and the volume and all of that. It's just a, a simple little treatment thing to get in ahead of time. Um, so when it does, if it goes over the basin, then it fills up and gets into the um, into the input. So it's the size of a septic system for a house, isn't it? Pretty much. Oh, uh, this is bigger than that. Way much bigger. And it's a pretty good size the system. <laughs> so we'll, we can talk more on that. Tony, totally, that septic system is not going in until they build the building, though, right? That's correct. Yeah. If they build the building. If they build the building. That's why it hasn't been brought to the board. Right. The board of health. Um, number 11 is in regards to the bioretention area. Um, that's my page. Uh, number 11 is, yes. uh, I think you meant number 7. It gets back with the land use of higher. Yes. 44% TSS removal. I think it was common. It should have been 7 versus 8. But. And I, actually, I think that um, this comment applies to the actual depth of the bioretention area. Isn't clear on the plans? If it, if, and um, based on the rim of the catch basin. There's a detail. But it didn't show the rim, like the elevation of a catch basin rim versus the bottom of a retention oh, oh, area. Okay. It's right, just to be sure that there's, you know, retention time within the basin. Um, number 12, uh, erosion and sedimentation control measures were not shown around the proposed water line. Tony did mention we'll that. We'll do that. We'll update the plan. Number 13 is in regards to groundwater elevations. Stormwater permit application package includes test pit data for use in stormwater management design. Test pit 1 indicates that modeling occurred 52 inches below grade. This elevation is not going to be consistent with the required two foot separation between the bottom of the infiltration and annual high groundwater elevation. It does, oh, I'm sorry. It does, it is okay. The elevation of the recharge system and groundwater are acceptable. However, it's within four feet of each other, which means you need a model um, a groundwater mounting analysis performed, um, which was not included in the application. I haven't had time to do it. Yeah, we'll talk on that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just read that. Um, number 14, stormwater bylaw requires a stormwater operation and maintenance hmm. plan. Um, not included in that was a map showing the stormwater management devices maintained in the plan and a maintenance agreement. An agreement with affordable and enforceable. We'll show the plan. I'll, I'll get that for the plan. Now, as far as the agreement, that's a town requirement. So give us your agreement, and we'll, we'll look at that, uh, Greg and I, and Richard. And if it's, we have any negotiating things, we'll negotiate with you, but most likely we'll just have to sign it. So that's an agreement that the town has. We'll, if you can get it to us, we'll review it and get it executed. Is, is that something the town has? Yep, we have. <laughs> A maintenance agreement for the stormwater um, management plan? That's, that's the applicant submits some plan and some maintenance agreement. We we'll submit the plan, but the agreement's a town agreement between you and the future homeowner or future owner of the property. It's an agreement that says that we're going to do something. Um, you're going to, we're entering into it. I'm talking as my client. We're going to enter in an agreement with you, and we're going to do certain things that you have to do. Yeah. However long you want us to do it. So that's a town agreement. That's not something that our attorneys are. Right. right. What I think it is, though, is you're proposing. Here's my stormwater management plan, and then the town is saying, "I agree with your stormwater management plan." And we're going to follow up on it every once in a while. So. Um. He's got something. Okay. I want to interject this because you've gone over fire suppression, water lines, building permits, etc. No matter what goes on here tonight for any of that, it's the day that the permit is taken out. You will meet those codes should they change. So the fire suppression, for example, will be guided by the state fire marshal to our fire chief. No permits can be issued and nothing can be decided until I want the permit now. The same with the building codes, the same with the septic design. 
all of that is subject to the day it's done. So whatever agreement you make today for fire suppression or anything like that will not apply if the changes, okay? So my suggestion is that you make all these requirements, if you're going to have any requirements, that they meet the current code applicable at the time, okay? The second thing I want to bring up is I'm unaware of, there's several permits that are required here, building permits, fire permit, uh, stormwater permit. I am not sure of expiration dates, and I'd like you to get a legal opinion on every single stage of the permit, when it expires, because some permits may expire in like a two-year time frame or something, I'm not sure. And I need clarification on that before a building permit can be issued. For example, if, you, if he doesn't build the building for three years and one of these permits expires in two, we'll wind up back here. So I think everybody needs to be on the page where where's the shortest permit and where's the bottleneck if this comes up. So it, it can get a little complicated. We're, we, we totally agree with that, that you condition to the most current um, um, requirements, whether it be fire building at the time that Mr. Stryker pulls or tries to obtain those permits. That's 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 the way it should be done. But right now, a site plan review, you don't care about the building. You care about if the building exists, what the storm water in. That's in, right. I have to so design something to that, and that's why we have it there. Um, I appreciate Dick's comment. Yeah. That's, that's great information, but we need to take now, that this up. building came in for a building permit and it was um, 20,000 square feet that's not doable we'd have to be back before your boards but if it comes in 36 and it's essentially that size and that location and he has to bring a site plan in to do this to the building official he probably would use the site plan if it's anything varying different than that then we have to come back before your boards but if it meets that kind of criteria because they have to use something for storm drainage and that should be able to go to the building official we get the permits fire, electrical, plumbing, um, building, based on the codes that are at that time. Typically, the permits that are issued here and by CONCOM should have a, an expiration date that we put a tracking file on, so that if we're getting to the date, most of the time we're allowed to come back and ask for an extension. Um, you may grant it or you may not, but um, most permits should have an expiration date on it. Just to comment on that, probably the shortest time frame will be the site plan review. That's a one-year lapse if it's not significant construction undertaken. So that would likely be the first one you so would have. Special permits will, uh, you know, are two years. Although there's permit extension legislation in place, we'd have to double-check and see if it, one or both of those might be extended under that. I'm not sure when we do the, but the site work for this is the thing that's going to go. We would think that that would be substantial improvement on the site. But regardless, we would come back to you um, before, say, two months before that's expired. And I think usually it's a month, but at least two months before it expired in case there's occasion we couldn't get a meeting together to show you the progress on the site if we had to ask for an extension and more definitive on a building or something of that. So the big thing there is the agreement, um, my understanding and reading the code, that that's a town agreement that you would like my client to enter in with you. So um, if we have to have further discussion on that, but I would think that blanket agreement, or it's a very, it sounds like it's a very basic form. Yeah. When you wrote the regulations, that your consultant should have included an agreement with that. That, that should be an extra stormwater bylaws. So, should be, I think, right? Yeah, because otherwise, if you had the private guy, you'd get a number of different agreements which you wouldn't want to have done. Have them on yeah. board. <clears throat> so why don't you say to ask? Well, I don't know if you wrote them a letter or not, but I no. think at our last planning board meeting, instead of having two boards review it, we were going to give the, plan, uh, the Conservation Commission authority to institute the stormwater management plan. And I don't know if you're the chair or what. No, I'm uh, yeah, but no, no matter what, across the board, the stormwater bylaws are the bylaws, whether it be the conservation right. or the. But they were going to, seeing they were involved yes, with you're, right. you're absolutely right. And you have one more meeting scheduled for this, do you? Later this month. 
Uh, to, to, to bring you up to speed, last uh, I think it was the last meeting we discussed it because it's within the Wetland Protection Act area that the uh, conservation is in charge of stormwater in this project. So, so you don't have two boards you know, going head to head. So you own it. It just makes sense. If there, if there was no wetlands issues, the, the planning board would address it. And seeing that you're going to have to look at it anyways, it just made more sense that the conservation commission would address the concern. Actually, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that um, the planning board relinquishes its stormwater authority to the uh, uh, conservation commission in this particular yeah, project. Last week, we already did it. I don't think you need to make a vote. I felt vote, like we should under vote your, on it. Under I, your I made a motion. Bylaws, it's automatic. I made a motion. Somebody can second her. For a second. Well, do we have the minutes from last meeting to see whether it's done or not? Do we have a second? Do you want to Trust hold me. that back? You guys Trust said you'd do it the next meeting. That's what I remember. Yeah. So this All right. Is I, I, I relinquish my motion. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Keep going, Gene. Um, the last three comments are regarding the notice of intent specifically. So I don't know if we want to go through those or not. So now we. Yes. They're not big comments. Yeah. 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 The, the first is regarding the um, existing open order of conditions on the property and the EEP's requirements, which can't have geographical overlap of. Um, order of conditions for this project and then this project where there is geographical area that they both would govern. So our suggestion is to you know, issue a certificate of compliance for a portion of it. Um, and I think you did explain that that's your intention. Yeah. It'll cap in action and then this one. Yep. But they're um, um, Comment 16 was regarding the water connection and the um, exclusion of erosion control barriers, which Tony said that they would. In. 17 limits of site stabilization measures um, are limited to the footprint of work defined by the control barriers. However, a lot of the limits of work do not include ground disturbance to the bottom of the We'll take care of that. Yep, so there wasn't any major comments. Good, thank you, Gene. And then the Council of Governments has more, has some of the same that. Mike, you already checked yeah, off, some but of this, most of this we've already discussed. I don't we all have a copy. You all got copies? You guys all have a copy? Did you all get copies of this? Too? Okay. I called it. It didn't get distributed to you folks. I had sent it to town last week. I should have sent it to you directly. So I apologize. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it before now. Sure do. Tony, get me one. Yeah, that Pat, are you, are you going to just hit the ones that we didn't hit? Or you're not going to go through every one, are you? I'll just go through real quick. Up to the so we won't go into detail. And then yeah, we got those little things. Greg came in. Greg came in, Greg came in late. Do you want to yeah. So I was looking primarily at the uh, site plan review section of the zoning bylaws. That's what the zoning, the, the uh, planning board is looking at. So um, some of this crosses, you'll, a lot of it will be familiar. And I left all of the, the detailed engineering work to Jean. Thanks. That's why we hired her for this kind of stuff. Um, I reviewed, there's a whole long list of the uh, plans and the materials that were reviewed to start here. Well, a couple things, the, the street number on this appears to be wrong. The 236 designation in the assessor's records is for a different property. This particular property doesn't have a street designation. And in fact, the, um, the book and page for this that is presented, map 123, lot 23, is actually only a portion of it. There is also a portion of map 122 lot 1 which is um, a part of this property and it has been this that's been all consolidated in an A&R plan um, originally there was one signed I think in uh, January or February and then in April um, this new lot 1 was completed so this constitutes so a new lot has created from portions of these others so it's really not going on to a separate lot in the back. It's just that this change that they've made via the A&R hasn't been formalized in the assessor's records as of yet. So just a couple, you know. Those it's are just moving this line to accommodate the 
Well, they they originally they did the, the earlier in the year they created the new lot one, and then when they came in in April they moved the line over. So so lot run was was created earlier, but this is the final uh, the final outline of the boundaries of it. So just to just to be clear on that that it's uh, and uh, that plan book 134 page 54 this is in is the most current as I understand it of the descriptions of this property. And then the address. Are you aware of this number thing? Yeah, I, I spoke to about it. So you'll get a you'll get a number, a different number for it. Well, once you get a building permit, they issue a number. Until then, you have no number. Yeah. So right now, it would oh, it okay. would technically be just Greenfield Road with no number on it. This goes to a different property across the street, also <coughs> in joint ownership. Oh, that's why the it's same owner. A pat uh, question. We get yes. Do, does he need to amend the application to include the right plot plan? You know, they're all there someplace. There's Thank references you. to them in notes and things throughout. But I just wanted to, to clarify things going forward, you know, when he goes to get permits or what have you later on. It would be a lot clearer yes. if, if that title was clear. Well, the title's clear. It's on record, and it shows the update, but I don't think it's come to the town presence yet. Right. So a patriot right. or whatever. But, but is it on this plan here? Does it refer to that? It does in some of the notes in different places. Yes. See, what but happened is I think but it's we did this. There was one prior generation. Yes, yeah. there was like in uh, uh, January generation, and then that, lot, that one line moved, this side line here. So what we can do on this plan set, because I've got to add some things from Gene's, we can update that. Recorded and amend the application. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. No, that's good. It's done right. Good All right, that's good. Right is good. So I'm just going to um, go through at this point. I'm going to move to uh, page six, general comments. So we've already gone over the, the street address. The, um, the sections of the, the zoning bylaws that we're looking at, it's 5400 is the site plan review section. Section 5431 lists out what plan subject to this section shall show. Um, the notes indicated that the wetlands were delineated in 09. That's on the boundary information uh, notes on sheet two. And that was prior to the work that was done on the bridge. So I just wanted to make sure that the existing conditions plan is showing the wetlands in their most current well, I have to delineation. That because I think that was all done in accordance with the bridge. In 09 is when the whole project started with the bridge, and that's all the, the bridge is all included with that. Has to be. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure of that because it looked it looked like the date was was precedent to the work done on the bridge. So just to make sure that that's all up to date, I'm sure ComCom is looking at that much yeah, more extensively we, we as well. Yeah, we have information from DEP that has proved the replication. They've been out there. So we're confident twice. that it's... Twice. They've done it twice. Okay. I noted that there was one area of replication that was shown, but I wasn't sure if that was work that was done subsequent the to the bridge work or what. Bridge two times. So as long as, you know, as long as you guys, I think you know, good. assert that's good, that's great. Um, we've already mentioned going down to B... Um, no loading areas are, are designated on the plans. We've, we've already, you'll see throughout these comments that honestly tonight was the first time I've heard specifics of the, the actual use that's being proposed for this facility. Um, so some of these questions come out of a lack of knowledge about what was sure. being proposed. Um, it's the, the uh, Building Commissioner and Zoning Enforcement Officer designated it as a retail use for purposes of deciding how to go forward. So that's how I was assuming it was that it was propane stored on site and, and for retail use. So some of what we've heard tonight changes what we may be thinking about it. So just put but that how do we put that in conditions or something, right? Yeah, they, well, I think maybe some more specific information from them as to the use and then conditions which specify what the they've said. Right. Because if they, if you do start selling retail, then it changes everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Don't forget, right. they're going to get a, we got to get a license from, we got to redo the license for the select board. And the license gives them permission to operate as a business. Right. Okay. In the supplemental information I submitted with the pictures of the operation showing the thing, it talks about what they do. On site. So Unfortunately, I, I hadn't seen a copy seen, of that, seen that um, as of yet, so that may answer a lot of our questions. Yeah, so I think that answers that. And I understand where you come because you know you often treat a 
commercial, you know, typically have loading zones and things like that. Right. So, we totally so if that's that. not an issue, then you can ignore that. We've already discussed no building elevations and no snow disposal areas, so that will be taken care of. Um, the two-inch water line, we've already discussed. Fire protection measures um, are not detailed in any way, and you may have this, you know, opinions about what level of fire suppression is required, but I think some statement in regard to it specifically would be helpful. Um, I didn't see, and I searched, any existing or proposed hydrants. Again, there was a hydrant uh, um, graphic in the legend, but I couldn't find it. Maybe there was just so small that I missed it. There's probably one. Well, I looked I along one, five and ten. There's one right across the street pretty much. Well, I, I, uh, as I say, I, I you know, that would 500 feet of the yeah. it'd, be, it'd be helpful for, for whatever fire suppression measures you feel are necessary to be detailed. I'm just going to add a note to the plan that fire suppression will be handled at building permit time. Okay. And obviously, when under the assumption that this was storing unknown quantities of liquid propane, that put fire suppression in a whole different category. Well, We're talking about stormwater and, and issues of polluting the stormwater. We also have issues, other environmental issues of air pollution and potential combustion, which are outside of the stormwater issues, but are, uh, are of concern to the board and to the community. Sure. There was supposed to, as I was working on this all last week, there was a huge blow in Tavares, Florida with some very dramatic pictures. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I was watching that too. And I said, time so, is great. I've got to leave. I'm, 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 I'm very facility. glad to hear that we're talking about a very different scale and type yeah. of facility. Yeah, this so. is not a rhino facility. <laughs> but if I understand Could this be, correctly, once it. again, there's no on site storage. All the storage is in a DOT regulated vehicle, correct? That's correct. At this time. Don't yeah, that exactly. they don't take loaded tanks to the customers. No, right? they're, they're, the tanks they have come in are refurbished. Um, they are refurbished. They bring them in, drop them off, he delivers them to the customer, fills them on site. That's what he does. But again, everything there, there is in a DOT regulated Trucks vehicle, which, is, DOT which it will be considered storage, yeah. mm -hmm. whether it be a half a tank, quarter tank, full tank, overnight, whatever, but it's in a DOT regulated. But if those details can be clarified, that would be helpful to the board, I think, and there you go. So it may, again, be in all those materials we haven't had a chance to look at yet. Um, we've already talked about the uh, reinforced concrete piping. Again, I think just a formal waiver request. And that, that can be provided under Section 5440. Sorry, 5450. The, the board has the ability to waive technical compliance with any elements that are not relevant. Um, F goes in initially to parking. Again, as a retail use. There were certain levels of parking. There are two different retail uses that are listed in the parking requirements under uh, Section 3130. Either one of those retail uses would result in more required spaces than what you have, but what you're telling us is it isn't really a retail use. Right. So um, based on that information, the board will have to look back at there. There is a, a, a storage facility use there that lists a parking requirement. We can look back at that, but in any case, well, once we decide what it is, then the parking will have to meet We're the requirements. We're trying to support enough parking for, for the people that actually, you know, a little bit more for it, it actually uses it. Okay. And um, we've already talked about, you've already said you would provide some more information about uh, turning radii and so well, forth I for emergency vehicles on site. You no, know, my, my comment was that there's 78 or 80 feet between the fence and the building, which in my opinion is more than adequate for fire truck to turn around. I didn't get any comments from the fire department or the emergency or police department that from any comments that that was inadequate for a turnaround. Um, turnarounds that I've seen, um, 60 feet wide, 20 feet, uh, 60 feet long, 20 feet wide with 28 foot radial and a hammerhead would be sufficient. We've got 78 feet, I think, between. So that would be, you that. know, that's an easy response and then the board can fill reassured that in fact there is sufficient space. Yeah. Um, also, we talked about the, the bridge. Um, you obviously are providing that information in some measure. Have it, yeah. And I know that there were extensions of the retaining walls and it sounds like 
additional work to the existing retaining walls that you described today where they're going to be capped yeah. off and so yeah. forth yeah. and there wasn't any information on um, that I'd like planned to construction. Talk about that for a quick second. Um, the bridge was built, it's 100% done, it's rated for two cement trucks on top of each other and the top wasn't done because it depended on who was going to come in to buy the property, what kind of look they wanted. So we're talking about putting some cap on it. Yeah, there's a small yeah. extension on either yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an extension just to, to make a smoother. Because everybody, it seems yeah. like the bridge comes up, it comes up. It's like, oh, it's unsafe. It's this, that. It's no, like, people just need the information, and the, I that think hadn't we have been a detail of the I mean, but it'd be the same I mean, type of blocking there. We're not. It's we're not going to change the look of cap that. and some stuff. It's, it's it? maybe a quick detail, or just I a note it's saying it'll be the detail with the cap on the point. Okay, it's right there. Yeah. Okay. Good. Then, then that's covered in terms of that. <clears throat> so moving on to the next page, um, H, it's the light question. I mean, it actually comes up a couple times. Um, the, there's only the one light proposed. We don't have any information about the nature of the fixture, the height of the pole, or any of that. Um, and there's no security lighting whatsoever for the building or parking areas, which you indicated, you know, if you know what would probably go on there, same same principle as putting the building on the plan, I'd go ahead and put it on. I would know, try, I'll try to address. Because then this. you wouldn't have to come back. You know, that would be a fairly minor change, but it would be a waste of time if people had to come back. Are you, you sure know, you need to do a, is that on there? Oh, uh, no. It's just, well, we do have the light pole, but I don't show the fixture of it. It's on the oh, light pole. okay. So well, well, I'll get you something on that. And I'll, We'll go look at your building and you can no. tell me what kind of wall pack you got there because it'll be typical to a bubble. No, we should light that place up and have more security down at the Fort Knox, believe me. That's well, in, in, in addition, when you look no. down in 5460, it also addresses lighting questions and you want to you want to so minimize hard. lighting intrusion. You want to use full cutoff down lighting luminaires. You want to minimize any intrusion onto other properties. So just to demonstrate that, I know a lot of building commissioners like actually to see some spec sheets for the light so that they know that I'll it's this sheet or it's equivalent so they know what's, you know, what's in compliance and what's not. It's so it's those it's kinds of details are often helpful. I mean, that's one of my big concerns as well, lighting. Yeah, I'll so get no, you. No, I'll get no infiltration type yeah. of thing. Yeah, the good thing is, is this is right in the middle of it. So. Yeah, it's okay. You just, you know, yeah. just don't need it shining in no. all right. the and you, yeah. you can do the studies to just show real easily. Where the where the lights will go and where they will not. Yeah, I'll get your cut sheets on. Uh, let's see, traffic flow and safety. I think we've gone over all of those things, so we don't need to go into that. We've gone over the sign, so that's taken care of. I'm moving down to section 5460. Well, did, did you um, hours of operation? Did we talk about that? Oh no, I'm sorry, I didn't go. That's up an I. You have it up an I. I missed that. Um, yes. The uh, in par part of the traffic flow and safety questions are related to um, what are the operating hours for retail traffic, if there is any coming in and out, uh, their own trucks coming in and out. Um, that's important information for the neighbors, you. typically. I'll, I'll have to get you that information. I'm not sure what. Same as it is now. I don't know. That. Well, you know, he works through the day, and guess what? Night once in a while, there's no retail whatsoever. Right, um, so, and, and in an emergency case, me and me, but oh, somebody yeah, has. Of course, so he's, you run up your full pay and you want to have him come fill you up. You know, it's just one but if there are standard like delivery times when bigger trucks will be coming in and maybe idling, you know, it, uh, that's one thing that oftentimes the neighbors are concerned about if it is at early hours of the morning or late hours. I always see the late morning. Always. I will. So just I'll specify and, and, and say, I'll in, I'll in case of an emergency, that, things that, might happen that, outside of those regular times. We have some restrictions in town about just, again, noise after. Yeah, I don't, think, we're, I don't think we're going to yeah. buck any of those. When, when I was there, like I told you, he was, the truck came in from Pennsylvania, I believe it is, to do the um, drop off the refurbished tanks and take some of the old ones. It was at midday. It was at noon time. Yeah. So it's always like before noon. We do have these regulations in town, but can we look at the piece of property and where it's located? And, and there's there's uh, APR land on one side, a house that's uh, buffered like several hundred feet on one. It's not like it's it, this is in the center of Deerfield. Well, I I and did. For have they ever come and complained about anything? By the way, what the neighbor just no no no. I'm, I'm just trying to. Uh, 
I, 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 th so, I, I think we're looking at this project like it's in the center of Deerfield. Well, I, I, I'm going to pass around to you guys a locust map that I did. No, we're doing, we're doing okay, but... This is just taken off of the assessor's no, records rolling. online, but it does we're give you a through. sense of what I, is I surrounding. I'd like to just work through. Yeah, it's enough for all you guys. This is um, a great place for this thing. We don't have a lot of the better. So, there, um, it is a mixed commercial residential uses no. along Greenfield Road. However, when you um, go off to the, I'm going to say it's the southwest, I don't have the, here's the map in front of me. Um, there is an area there that is uh, Nash. It's, right it's Evans Lane and Mill Village. There's a bunch of duplex properties that come in, and they, they back up. Here's your subject property right here, and those residential properties back up and then it's back right to here. Yeah. So that was that's another thing that I often find to be helpful, and it isn't required under these, so I didn't make that comment, but um, oftentimes site plan bylaws, site plan review bylaws, will ask that the applicant show the nearest residential properties and the distance to them. So that's, that's important, again. You know, it's like they're already neighbors to this uh, operation, basically within 300, 400 feet. So I don't, you know, I don't, nobody's coming. Is everybody coming to, uh, uh, to say anything about it? as far as appealing it or? Well, this is the first public hearing, so this would have been the first opportunity for people to have been present. How many of um, of the uh, Evan, is it Evans Drive, actually got a um, certified letter to show, did it? Are, are within the... Um, they, only, I think, three of those were within the abutters list. Oh, I supplied that information. I, 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 went, I, I just made a quick list of the, the nearby properties, and then I checked the ones that were on your abutters list. Okay. And on Evans Lane, I see just three checked. Mill Village has three checked. Um... So, so the majority of them were located along. Well, we're all the way, all the way to Mr. Greenfield Moses' house. You the letter, right? All the way to your house. That's going to be six, seven, eight, eight hundred feet, thousand feet away. You must have gone. Oh, you got it for his business across the street. What's that? You got it for his business across the street. No, no, he got his house too. I think it's are just a three hundred feet. I used to live in Evans Lane. Yeah. So just. Yeah. Um, to alleviate some concerns that people may have. Okay, Pat, keep keep going. Um, Can we uh, somewhat shorten this thing? I think we're basically well, done. We, we, I think we'll be. I think done. we're done. <laughs> we talked about the lights. That's the key thing, and then you know more information on minimizing contamination of groundwater from hazards storage of hazardous substances. So I think what it comes down to is they're fairly quick fixes just to clarify and state what is sometimes the obvious but needs to be in the record. Uh, I have two more. Two more. All right. I, you know, I did find uh, we got some comments from police and fire. Okay, good. Can you get them or can I just quickly read them? Because they're nothing, uh, nothing big. The fire says, um, fire chief says, again, maintain clear access. Prepare an emergency plan, install a lockbox. Uh, well, it says on the building, but again, so you know, people building. look at this, they think there's a building there. So, oh, yeah, but also for the fenced-in area, um, ensure the bridge rating is adequate. Uh, update permit with the fire department, and the fire chief, the police says, stop sign at the exit to the driveway. I'll add that. Um, that was one of my notes. I forgot to add it. To and then line of sight issues, but I think without the sign there, there's nothing out by the no. road, right? So that that was their main thing. Is the and then if during the when you're working there, if you need a police officer to control any traffic, what's that? When you're doing the work there, yep. if it's yep. coming out to Route the Five and Ten, work. how are you going to have to sustain that? There's nothing to do there because most of, all the new work's going to be on the other it's side. On the other the side, yeah. except for Gems. And then that, I can't read his writing. Can you read? Yeah, and what we would do is just ask for the fire department. You can make those conditions of the permit. Water main to on is Evans Lane. Yeah, 
officers. Oh, officers will be uh, needed need to, to help cross. So I think that's running not an issue. across. Yeah. Roger, Roger, well, Roger. Rogers on the water. Rogers in conflict of interest now. You put him in conflict of interest. We're going to pay right most likely the water district to do that connection in the road, and and they'll be responsible for the police detail and yeah. how that works. I believe that's. How yeah, he, he can multitask. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> Dave, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll negotiate on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tony, can you just go back to the plan with the easement on it? Greg, do you have access to that property from your existing property today? Yes. Okay. Is that, I can't see that far. Um, about 10 years ago, I could have. But is that right on the property line? The, well, it comes from across the yeah, bridge. Yeah, but right there, that right there. Is that on the property line? No, it's a little bit off. How many? Oh, feet here? That's yeah. oh. 10 feet off. 10 feet off, okay. 12 feet and, or 15 feet. And that, so that parking lot, that little parking lot's 25 feet or 50 feet away? Uh, the parking lot right here is 10 feet off the property line. Off the property line as well, okay. It gets a little closer with the road here, but. I, um, that easement, yeah. and Greg, I hear what you're saying. I don't have a, pro a real problem with the business. I just reserve that in a deed. Yeah, I'm not, rights. that easement concerns me an awful lot. And because, two, two things that concern me with that. One is, I am, I, I've been on the board, and I'm now I sound like Fran. I've been on the board since 1980. I got a lot of years here, and I've seen too many times where we, the town, had, things have happened. And so having an easement there concerns me that another butter is going to come back, and they're going to try to use a shared driveway, or they're going to do something else. And so that's a concern I have about that easement. It, a red flag, when I saw that easement, mm -hmm. a red flag has gone up in my mind. What's the no, I'm getting confused on what you're saying. Another butter. I am the butter. I, yeah, but the other butter is this way, and you know who they are. Who owns the other land behind you? So there's access. What, what I don't want that to turn into is access. Oh, no, they to, can't. To there's another. no way. There's a, there's a distinct line between them. I know there's a line between that, <laughs> but that line can end up sooner or later being crossed. So no, the, the, easement, the easement, I have a, a concern over the easement. If you're selling that property to Walter, I'm going to call it Walter. Yep. To, uh, if you're selling it to him, then just sell him the property and, and then walk away. Otherwise, otherwise, it's a little bit too much like something else is going to occur there sooner or later. Well, how can you have an easement and cross property go to another property? No, you've got access to your property. You have access to all your property currently today from the other direction. Yeah. So why do you need to access from his direction? Um, because of the way my property is shaped, and I go around a piece of town property and stuff, so it's like I need to get around and move my equipment around and stuff, my trucks and whatnot. So, so that's, that ends up being a, a driveway for you in and out of your property. I'm, I'm not a proponent of it. I'm just, no, I'm only one, one person. But the way that would be is when he sells to... Uh, to uh, Richard, he'll um, he'll just reserve that easement over the deed. Yeah, so just yeah, I'm saying, for let, him. I'm saying, let the easement go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what's, that's yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. But all right, so you just know where my feelings yeah, are. No. Well, if, if if it's a problem for some, it can be specific to this person, and you know what I'm saying. There's, I guess, ways to yeah work around that and, and make it so it's not a permanent easement. So really, that what he does is he reserves it to himself. It's not to anybody else. So if it was reserved to Greg yeah, Gardner, but if he sold, if he sold that, it would disappear. It with it. No, mm -hmm. if he sold the property, his property up here, that easement runs. That runs would run with the land. So it's not to him; it's to the property. It's to the property. That's typically how it's done. Yeah, anyway. right. yeah. Well, process. Done. I mean, I mean, it's, it's not unusual for an owner part. to reserve rights, whether it be to access or to yeah, but you water. Can't but I'm looking at it as if it's a red flag, and it, it might be a deal breaker for the zoning board who has to vote this as a special permit. That you know, the, there may be ways to. Well, I think it, the concerns we try to address the concerns. The concern that I hear is that this easement runs up. And we can have it so that it's not up against the property line. For someone else to get to that, they would have to intrude or trespass on, on, on Richard's property to get to that easement. Yeah. And well, you can say you know, that you can restrict it to this stays. property. If you're concerned, you can restrict it to that property. He would not most likely have a problem with that. It's just he it, wants it, to have Yeah, that easement's there now. Down the road, though, Walter has that and, and Greg has it. There's a budding piece of property. Greg decides, you know what, I'm going to sell this guy 10 feet by 50 feet, and now we can get over there. 
So, and I just say this too, we just went through this hullabaloo for months with the Butterfly Museum, with the road that supposedly doesn't exist. And, and, it's, and I just don't want to see something like that. We don't need that. And he doesn't need it because he's got access from well, the other side. Well, first of all, it's APR property, so I can't imagine why anybody would want to go from my property to APR because you can't build on it, okay? So that's number one. Um, number two is if we restrict it to my property, that's fine. Yeah. See, APR that's property doesn't mean you can't build on it. Oh, you, if you want to pay it back. That's right, exactly. Exactly. And, and it's done yeah, more than you once. Can put it by the way, that issue is just rest this town restrict that easement to his, his property and not to anybody be. else. You can do that in conditions of the permit. Okay, I, know I think that I, would solve. I know, I know what I can do. Well, yeah, no, but I mean that's that, right. that would be a way to solve that Question. concern. If 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 the board saw fit to giving him an emergency access, where he kept the rights for an emergency purposes to access it and where it wouldn't be used on a regular basis, would that be acceptable? I don't think the board, I'm not speaking for everybody else, wants to see another commercial use going in and out that driveway with all the rest of the stuff. So, that, that's, that's part of my, that's my concern. Yeah. Because if Greg starts using that as his main access through, and then Walter starts getting PO'd because Greg is going through there and you know he's blocking my way, and Greg gets PO'd and has a fight with Walter and says, you know, I got a legal easement through here. You know, you can't block my driveway. And I've seen this happen in this town it does for the last 20 years. And there's so, a fight over the snow. So I'm just saying, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nightmare a begging to happen, yeah. is what it is. Not necessarily as you guys as owners. No, the, years the next, next guy that comes in. Right, hey, I'll give, you, I'll give you another example. Right down the road, the car dealership used to be there. Bill Dews is there. Bill Dews and the guy are fighting over the cars being delivered. Because he, he pulled in Bill O'Dews and then Bill didn't like him in there dumping the cars off. Yeah, but you have an easement. <laughs> you just but but, but you only own it now. Someday somebody else might own it. Well, when you buy a piece of property, it comes with a burden or an easement or whatever you want to call it. You know what you're buying. That's where these days are today. You know what you're buying. And also it's, you know. Okay. Yeah. Is any part of that property we're talking about part of the original railroad layout? Yes. And which part of it? All of it? Nope. Um, the piece behind it is um, the back side. So it's 108 from 1945, which was railroad land, but I couldn't from tell where it was. Pretty much it here up. down through was a railroad bed. Yeah. And okay. the Mass Highway holds a piece of land here which blocks up this brook, which floods my property. And I'm in the middle of trying to get that fixed up but with the DEP, because the only reason there's any water here is because of the mass. They own a part of that railroad bed that's caved in, so that's why you have a backup. This, this land was always dry for years, talking to Walter Kanaki and whatnot. He used to drive through it with his horse and buggy in and everything else. Um, that's a long time ago. He's that's a long time, that's right. Yeah, and, sure yeah this is a, there's a railroad trestle here that caved in. But there was a piece to come down through here for years that was uh, the railroad bed from um, Boston. Have you got all the clearances to build on it? Uh, so we're, uh, we're coming up on two hours here. So any other quick comments from planning board members? You guys? We should open up to the public. This was a public, yep. <laughs> public hearing. Uh, public, anybody have anything to say? Um, we have a, some abutters. You don't want to hear one. Mr. Camosa, you might be the only, you you might be the only one. I, uh, we're, this is a public hearing, so we're here to hear the public on this, on this uh, project. All right. Hearing none. Um, so we heard a lot of comments. We heard a lot of answers, but there's a few things that still need to be done. So I think the planning board is not ready to close the hearing. We'd like to keep it open um, for, for one more round but I think we're pretty clear on what yeah. all the issues are that was the main thing that I wanted to be taken care of at this meeting what's what's your next steps um, well we'd, we'd like to do a continuation as well right. and uh, Casey sent me a bunch of dates earlier yeah and we've kind of looked at the dates of what's good or not good so I'm assuming all of these dates she gave us were Mondays no, there's no, there's so Thursday. we can maybe be flexible. Um, we'll do whatever. We, we, get, we get seven members, so although I just wondered about the 26th that was, that was five of August be, myself. Yeah, five have to be Is that a bad day yeah, or a good day? Out, That's yeah. a good day. I, well, a good I'll tell day. you what, I mean, closer the to the, it'd be a week yeah. before the regular meeting, which right. is so the Tony, day. how long do you need? 
Two days. <laughs> you really want to You're pay, paying a premium for that. <laughs> pressure. The pressure. What's the 10th and 12th of September? Are those Tuesdays? Or what uh, else? God, he's got a count. The 20, oh, he's got one. The 26th he's got would be okay. Um, only reason why I'm going to be in Of Tampa. August, right? Yes. 26th. Tampa. I'm going to be in Tampa from the 19th to 23rd. I've got the last kid going out of the house to college. So. Oh, wow. Congratulations. What are you going to do? So, <laughs> you're going to be in Tampa? Okay. That's right. <laughs> but we'll have, the, the thing is, well, uh, we should be able to take care of, can I talk to you or call you if you have any issues? And Gene, our goal is to take care of them the rest of this week um, and try to get things back in. That'll give them, if I work do my work this week, that'll give them next week to make sure that everything's signed off and we're good to go so that when we meet yeah. on the 26th, everything is done. So the 26th works for you folks? 26th work? What day Monday. Week is it? Monday. 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 Three weeks. Fine. What's Monday of the month? Uh, Ron? Yes, sir. Uh, before we make the motion to make the continuance, I've got a, a list of things that, that I think that we need to get clarification before the next meeting. Do we want to okay. discuss can, them? Can we can we share these to you, Pat? <coughs> the, sure. The list, and you can just make sure we get the answer to them? Yeah. Go ahead, Don. Uh, one is the right-of-way and uh, clarification of what the right-of-way is to access what particular parcels that that he wants okay and then a recommendation you're talking that, that easement that easement right away same thing all right uh some miscellaneous items that you went through on that list from time bond uh, and i'm the capacity of the trucks that are going to be stored there is only going to be they're going to be controlled by the uh, mass department of public works and it's not going to be any anything other than mobile storage in a vehicle there there's not going to be a, a bulk truck a bulk tank there that's correct okay and we it's not public works it's transportation isn't yeah, it yeah DOT. 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 it won't be a permanently mounted tank that's what i'm getting at we're not going to have another right. uh, one like where m, m was okay uh you're going to get the street numbers clarified uh there's no burn off what slasher reclaiming process what's that process whatever they call it. I think it. that comes back to contamination of the earth down there. It's the burn off of down there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that is. But I'm What's concerned carbon about... Carbon footprint, whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm concerned about no burn off. No, no, no. And the other thing I'm concerned about is that the building, the proposed building that they're going to put in eventually, just be restricted to that business and not a new, not a new business come in and locate on that site. Why the other... Subletting. Yeah, in subletting. other words... You can't rent it to some accounting firm to come in and build a building there. Change of use. Yeah. Use. yeah. I want to just make sure that it's it's restricted there. Those are my thoughts. And they're, uh, That's straightforward. You know, basically the building is going to be a single-purpose building. It's going to serve the needs of Walter and if, if nobody else's. That's a good condition. Perfect. Anybody else got anything else they want to add? That's good. Right, oh, so, yeah, all the things Otherwise, I don't have any problems. I'd like to have yeah, lots of problems. I'd like to make a motion that the zoning board of appeals continue the zoning board meeting until August twenty sixth at seven p.m. I'll second. All right. A vote. Robert. Yes. Ed. Yes. Yep. yes. Yep. Yep. All in favor on the twenty. Aye. <laughs> Can we make the motion. Do the same. I would like to make a motion that we continue our meeting to August twenty sixth. The planning board. The planning board yeah. um, and continue the public hearing. I want the rest of the garbage. Yeah. 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 This is one. Second. This is really game, dude. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You guys are very much. Are you guys are going to. Are you done or are you going to. Well, actually, before you guys leave, I noticed you have John and Jeannie here, and, and I think with them being here, I, I don't know if it'll screw up our. Uh, our agenda, but yes. I, I think what they, what they have to bring in front of the zoning board is something that we all may want to talk about when it comes to um, affordable housing. So, if it would be okay with the two chairs, I'd love to have John no, 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 this one ain't come and talk to both boards about uh, what they want to do. Can you hear without being posted? 
Yeah, we we heard with that. We we are we are posted with them. You're posted. We're not the zoning board. We're not posted. Uh, we can hear. We just can't act on anything. No, you can come to our hearing and tell us what you think. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go to? You want to go to that hearing? Yeah, I will. Actually. I'd like to go through some of our finish our agenda yeah. and go home. Take our paperwork. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go to the hearing. I just want to make sure we have our. our there. I feel that. Oh, no. What they need. Let's just take a look. That's right. We still have a quorum. Do you know what I mean? No. I have no clue what the hell you're talking about because I don't know what they're okay. next they, they came in, they, they want to take uh, two of their houses. We're going to the kitchen. Uh, the video place. We're, we're going into the kitchen. Oh. You think it's hot in here? So right why not, yeah. while this is all going on, oh. let, let, uh, let the applicants uh, know uh, what, what's happening. and Which is why we want members of the ZBA on that housing production right. plan thing, too. Exactly. So, uh, does this make sense? Do we need this? It does a little, What's but this? you were at this earlier meeting when we kind of talked about that, and yeah, that MJ in. Adams yeah, made it clear to Paul and all of us there. All right, all right. That's a big folder. No, he's got to run. But they should know that it's a but they, possibility. These, these they should know that. Should come to the. Okay, this yeah. is Thank you, Gene. John, they, they should come to the meeting we're having to talk about it. They didn't even know this. It will be publicized. Right. But if I didn't mention this right now, they wouldn't know that either. So, I, I agree with you. Do you really agree, or are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> we, our business will go faster if you're in that meeting, Which John. Which is it? <laughs> Without Lynn and you here, I think we can probably move quickly. <laughs> yeah. I, bullshit, I don't bring up stuff. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, so no, I, I, think we, I, I think it's a value, yes. I'm actually, I do too. And I don't think we have much here. I, I like well, Roger's minutes. left too, so we've got to be careful. Well, actually, I just, I kind of want to just not let them know uh, what's going on. Well, go to cover quick and we'll wait for you to come back. I mean, I mean he's not here. Yeah. The certificate of completion, we need Roger to vote on. I think that's the only thing we need to vote on, and then we can call it quits. That would be nice. And our next meeting is um, is at, at 6 on the 26th and 7. For the... Uh, yes. And that takes the place of our September meeting. Well, if it's anything like this, um, which I hope it's not, it, it, hopefully that's quick and then we can do other stuff on our agenda. Cause, yeah, because you know, you're going to have to go, you're gonna have to go months, into September significantly to, unless you change the date. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're, we, we're, out, we're out for Monday the 2nd and we're out for Monday the 9th. All right, so let's make our goal that we're 26 can be our... We can September. we can finish the public hearing and we can get any new stuff and not have to come back again. So the next thing on our agenda is um, so Emmy Sweetland's not here to talk about streetlights. Um, this this came up last month and we didn't know what to do about it. So I, let's see if we can do anything. Request for certification of completion from DA. Well, do we want to check any minutes too, or are we going to let that go? Do we want to review the minutes from the last meeting anywhere. Yes, yes, I do want to do that. Okay. So let's do that first. All right. July 1st minutes. Any motion? Do you have any other copies or just the one? What, the minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a copy, I think, if there. Sorry, we get these emailed, right? I don't know. Well, I just wondered. Yeah, no, we got them. They're the ones I think they are. Yes, we did, but. Yeah, okay. That's right. All Never right, mind. Sorry. I, I, I got them by email, and I. Right. Tabled the Deerfield Academy to today. Okay. All right. So, so what do we know? Need you move to? Tell me, want to move the motion? Move to you. You accept them? I wrote them. I make a motion to accept okay. the minutes of July first. Mm -hmm. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Four zero zero. Right. Yes. Excellent. So you, can you put in the minutes that John left after? I will. Just so we know that. I That's will. why it's four and not five. Now, let, now who, who seconded them? All right. Max moved them, and, uh, and John. Wait. Seconded. 
Tony. Thank you. So, so I'll wait to hear. You're going to talk to Gene. Yeah, I'll talk to Gene. There's like three or four issues, and then you'll. I think I'm just going to be addressing them in a letter. I'll get it to them in draft form so they can know about it. We'll do it. Try to get it all done before I leave for Tampa and drop the kid off. All right. And come back to the meeting. Because hopefully that's a five minute meeting if everything's. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is just this is one copy. So let me read it. Uh, this is from July fifth. So I don't. Oh, so it came right after our last meeting. Attached, please just find a copy of DEP WPA. You know what that is? No. What's the WPA? It's my initials changed around. It's it's really called a W. PA Form 8B, Wetlands, Wetlands Protection Act Form. All right. Certificate of Compliance for Deerfield Academy Project to make site improvements to the physical plant at the school. An as-built plan and photographs were submitted in support of the request. The Conservation Commission voted to issue a Certificate of Compliance at its meeting on June 27, uh, 2013. This was a joint application involving both the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. The next step is for the Planning Board to determine that the requirements have been satisfied. This action will permit any unused funds being held in escrow account established for the peer review can then be released back to the client. We are hopeful that at the next meeting in the Planning Board, a vote can be taken authorizing the release of any remaining funds. So this is from Priscilla in the Deerfield office here. Uh, so... Um, Bill Williams, who's from Deerfield Academy, he's the one that presented the project to us. Um, enclosed, please find the original of the Certificate of Compliance. Should be recorded in the Registry of Deeds. All right. Oh, that's two milk from Priscilla. So I, I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to. A site inspection was made in the presence of the applicant or the applicant's agent on June 27th. Who made the site is it? I guess DEP did. Okay, so Conservation Commission visited the site and they uh, hereby certified that the work regulated by the above reference order of conditions has been satisfactorily completed. And here's the. Oh, okay. So this is what we have to release. We at our meeting a year ago, June twenty eighth, two thousand and twelve. Um, a motion was made unanimously voted to accept the stormwater. Uh, All right. So we we were the stormwater plan. So we um. Last June, at our second joint hearing with the Conservation Commission, engineers from SVE presented a revised plan for the improvements to the public utility site. Gene Christie of Tyne Bond has re have reviewed the plans and reported them to be accessible to be acceptable. We accepted that stormwater plan. Uh, so now what we're saying is that they complied with it, so we don't need any more peer review. So all I can think is that this, if, the, if our Conservation Commission says they're in compliance, do we just second that or do we have to do some checking up on it? Well, so again, Gene, again, I guess comes up, did they have any, did they have to do any maintenance plan or anything? Did you have any conditions that you put on to your permit or you just approved their plan? I wasn't involved in that at all. Whatever, whatever you approved, I'd take a look at it just to see. If, yeah, um, okay. <laughs> oh, we already tabled it from the last meeting. Did we table it again to find out? The well, last meeting, we didn't even have this file, so they, they hadn't submitted it until after our last meeting. I, I kind of was hoping someone was going to be here to explain this to us, because I don't remember ever doing this before. You probably let Gene go. <laughs> well, so... so 
S SBE did the plans for Deerfield Academy. Gene and Tony that did them. We should get ahead. Tony did them. Yeah, it was Tony. It was Tony. <laughs> it was Tony. <laughs> we should go yell. Um, we'll call him back. What's his, what's his cell phone number? But, but the thing is, Gene doesn't hasn't been involved since this. Right. So well, the question is like, do we hire them to go see if they, if the whole thing is followed, we'll, I, or did the conservation commission? No, I, I, we dealt with the storm, storm water. water. Yeah. And I don't even know if I was here for every hearing, but I remember a little bit of it. But that's what Pat said. If we had any conditions on maintaining uh, the storm water, uh, I don't know what, what you know. I don't think there was any storage or no, anything like that. I, I, the quick thing I wonder about is when we did the storm water, I, I thought it was like they said. We did not set up a, a set maintenance agreement. They had to, the, the plan dictated the maintenance agreement. You, you're right. And then that maintenance agreement had to be signed by the participant that he'd accept it. That's nothing we generated. It came from, the, it came from what was done by the, you're right. by the project. You're right. Because this says right here, the Appendix C is the stormwater management plan indicates the frequency of inspections and suggested maintenance and operation mm -hmm. processes. And it's all dictated by what's done and what the And then that should be that. presented to the town, and the town should yes. be able to go up and check every once in a yeah. while if they're doing it. You should well. clarify that to Tony, too, so yeah, at least he's got that before he no, comes I, I back without it. No, I think he realizes it, it but there's Well, like I a, don't think he did. I well, think, he thought there was maybe a piece of paper that, that we're supposed some, to... Uh, there's some form the town had. That was generic, and it's not. It's specific to the stormwater. Plant. Right, because each one is different. Yeah, it, it can't, it can't be a be set of plan. And you'll be talking to him anyways, right, Pat? So just tell him that, that as far as my understanding was, and I could be wrong, but you could look it up, is that that plan is defined by what's done the for nature, the stormwater. The maintenance. Yeah. yeah. And, and for instance, if they had to the put a swale was, in, it had to be... I was just going to go through that packet. I'm not, you know, I'm not as intimately familiar with that particular application packet as I am with the others, and it may be that there is some standard template that you then expand on. I don't know. So but they went through it at their meeting with us, and as I understand it, they're putting a drain in the middle of this blacktop, and they're going to wash vehicles, and that water is managed and sent out through their, their system that they had set up as to how to do it. And there was some... There was something, something different about the where the plate ran or something. I forget what it was. And they had two. Did they have two pumps that pumped and alternated? Um, you know, it's so been I think, a while now. So what we have, this is an, it says as built survey completed by SVE November 26th. The plans had been done back in June. So really, maybe we need a peer review to say, does this as built Look, yeah, does it match? Yeah. yeah, but they must have done that already. Well, that's what I'm wondering. The conservation commission approved yeah, something. If, I don't if, know what they. Theirs would be for because they're within the buffer, I believe, oh, or a flood zone, yeah. and ours was Where's the stormwater management. And I don't think we did we relinquish them to continue. no because we you know this, can I look at that plan just for a second John we well, might need Gene just to take a real quick look at it yeah was this know. was this the meeting John where where the conservation commission was not too happy with us it was over to the senior center is that the same one I came the, we had a meeting that I came for that was at the end of at the senior no. center and it was a joint meeting with Hong Kong I think it was this yeah meeting. and they were not happy with the setup they were they were kind of grumpy. No, I think they're just grumpy. <laughs> I wonder too, like, did we do something wrong? It's like, we didn't. Well, do it. it looks, what it looks like is they have like three wash pads mm -hmm. and it's all pumped to the uh, sewer. Yeah. Two inch force main so, to the sewer. I guess I would recommend, let me ask, let me call the town tomorrow and see sort of what is our, what's expected of us. And I think we should have a professional look at it. How do we, I don't feel good about voting. Just to say they're kind of compliance when we have no clue. Dickie, you take a look at you got better at but I don't know like if everything's pitched to those things, but I wouldn't think so because they're trying to exclude clean water from the store uh, sewer system, but they have wash pads where when they wash a vehicle it goes into uh, there was some the sewer. There was some discussion now as I'm thinking of it as to whether the the drain for the wash pads had to be covered when they're not using it. Do you remember that? I do, but I don't even want to think about it. Because what I want to think about is that we approved some plans. Mm -hmm. Now this is what was done. We should have someone just look to make sure. Yeah, well, I think, I think to, um, I'm sorry, I just uh, came back here. Um, 
But if Jean was our peer review, she would, somebody needs to contact her right. and ask her if she did. I don't remember if she was or not. Well, I remember Tony was here doing the plans. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, she, Jean did the our peer review. On, oh, wait, she on did, okay. She'll have a file okay. then on yeah. her findings. Yeah. yeah. That's what you need to do is contact her yeah. and see. Okay. Did she do a final inspection or what the negotiations were? Okay, so so in the minutes here, I'll just put in here that John will um, check with Jean. Yeah. Yeah, this is way more than we talked about. Because this is the whole yeah, plan. It wasn't just the wash pad. We just talked about the wash pad and the grading. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I was here for all of it, Max. Right. right. But so we'll check on that. all the discussion was about the wash pad. So, John, you're going to check with ConCon or check with Gene? Gene. Um, I'm going to check, right, with the town and then Gene. You're going to check with ConCon and then we check with Gene yeah, from the Lion Bond. Is that what you're saying? No. When you say town, what do you mean by town? Um, Priscilla, they're the ones that have been dealing with this. Oh, okay. So All I right. just want to see what So you're going to, you're going to contact is. the the, prop, the, uh, the uh, per, uh, planning board per, uh, staff to talk to Gene about yeah. clarification. Okay. Because they didn't put any new buildings up. They just paved the area. Maybe those wash pads. Mm. Um, All right. I'm sort of familiar with it, but then I lost my. Uh, Do you want a pen? Agenda. Was this is this yours or mine? Yeah, uh, this is mine right here. You want another agenda? My, no, here it is. I had notes on the back. Of it. All right. Uh, That's old business. Correspondences and committee reports. Well, while you're um, talking about that, I'll tell you I just attended the uh, zoning board hearing. We may have increased our affordable uh, housing by two units. Excellent. Just right now. Do you have an invoice for the fur cog? <laughs> Do we need to vote on this pad? The chair has already approved Canada. He's already approved it. Like the Priscilla it's on contract. So. And Christy with it. Sixty-eight thousand dollars. That's how much. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I'm happy to sign that amendment. You're right here and now. <laughs> All right. We just just a bunch of things from yeah, neighboring towns. John, can I just ask you a question here? John, wait. We'll talk to Priscilla to verify that with Jean <coughs> Christie whether or not Deerfield Academy has completed their project and what help is in compliance and is in compliance with what? Deerfield Stormwater Management Plan. With Deerfield. So the other male is just neighboring towns having zoning. Zoning permits and Are there any uh, reports from subcommittees? Mm. Signage, open space, regional, regional plan. No. Actually, I, I've got a raw a question for anybody on the board that. Uh, oh, it is 910, I just want to. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, that's got me all excited. It, it says uh, Mass DOT is yeah. flooding my property. Does anybody know? What well, you know what? I'm going to go find out because I'm going to put a sign by my property saying the same thing. The guy that owns that property is... No, what he's done, what just I heard... Hey, Paul, let me talk and then you go can ahead. talk all you I want. I just saw the sign today and I have no idea what that means. There's there some means. issues with storm management with the Mass Highway. He put up a dike to keep it off his property. They said they couldn't put it there because it's on state property. So that's what it's all about. That's all I know. And I don't know if the sign is legal or not. That's another issue. I can tell you, uh, two months ago, before this sign went up, I followed up with Dick because last year I asked about that berm. Yeah. It was supposed to be a temporary, and it was supposed to be like a month or two when they don't yeah. strike, but it's been there for over a year. He's brought it up with them. He got DEP involved, so this may be a continuation of that, but it's 
state is dealing with it. So yeah, we, it's we a state. Yeah. Yeah. Dick's on top of it. Well, I'm going to go to the state and find out why they're allowed to dump from 5 and 10 on the back of my property and flood it. All right, is there anything else to talk about at this planning board meeting? Otherwise, can I have a motion to... Yes, Pat. One item I wanted to bring to your attention. I had thought it was going to make it onto the agenda, but it was a busy agenda. There was a letter that was copied to me that was received by the Board of Selectmen at their meeting last week from Attorney Dubendorf in regard to the Pavir lot south of Pelican uh, when we did the North Main Street rezoning. Remember, we had yeah. initially talked about those properties right, so south there. The attorney involved with this now? Because she's petitioning to have. Her the property. question of her property rezoning brought back. Well, then to public hearing. Do what they're going to do. So it, it's my understanding that the board of selectmen have now transmitted that letter to this board, and so you'll need to go ahead and set a public hearing. Um, there was a hope that this could be handled. I gathered at a September special town meeting, as yet yeah. date to be determined and so um, there was a need there will be a need for you to set a, a public hearing date um, that would be on your agenda for that next meeting on the 26th Everything and it'll be tight time that in a town do I, I it's not my understanding we have to set a public hearing date um, I'm not sure why we would have to if we want to uh, the select board has transmitted will have transmitted the request to you from which a is citizen, exactly how the thing came to which us is exactly how it. bill Deckers came yeah. through this came so the same way. I, I think you you know we can certainly look into the legality of it um, yeah but well, guess the, the town voters voted on it I mean we had public hearings I'm out of this one and I won't attend any meeting that involves the, it was there. discussed at the public hearing very specifically yep, the and owners came here and down asked there were taken out we left there and it will not be any meeting and yeah. the property owner was encouraged to be at the second meeting and, and they were was here in, was at the first I gather but not the second I have to double check the so sign Pat, the zoning stayed the same on that lot Yes, no changes were made. That's the right. only piece in that area that was left the same. Was left no, no, like no. There were a couple of properties down there. There, there were a couple of them there. that we were going to bring all out to the road. And because of the concerns of the, the residential neighbors down there, the board had determined that they didn't want to deal with that at all. They just wanted to the do the piece north. Of, north. North of Pelican stayed the same, and this one stayed the same. All right, so let's take that and turn it back to resident. Uh, we left it commercial. Let's it's split in half it's now. It's industrial on the back so part. Pat, what did the right. old that, land they they want it. done? They want it all industrial, I believe. Oh, so they want access from the from yeah. the front. Well, obviously, that, I wouldn't think the voters aren't going to vote. The neighbors last time yeah. were yeah. against it. But and that's why we did what we did. That's yeah. exactly yeah. correct. So why can't they just bring it to a town meeting and we not have to have public hearings? Uh, well, you'd have it's to have a, a zoning bylaw change, a change to the map as a zoning change, and that ha there, you have to hold a public hearing. You do not have to vote in favor of it yourself. Because you one don't have to recommend that it go on the warrant. One resident brings a, a note. I thought they needed 10 signatures or something like that. Well, that's to put it on the town meeting warrant. But, but. If they did that, there would still have to be a public hearing yeah. held by the planning board. Right. Well, I'll keep me posted because I won't So I have not got official notice from the select board that they're handing it over to us. I did get an email with that letter, but it didn't say anything about okay. official. Yeah, it may be that the, the administrative on. staff just didn't have time to affect that change in the couple days in between. Right. But just wanted to let you know that that, that is upcoming, and, it, and by the time... It gets to your desk. It's going to be already, you know, in a time crunch. Well, that property should probably go back. Well, to the it's just like you yeah. said, the planning board doesn't have to have a public hearing. They can say we had one, uh, and I don't even know what their how if they really wanted this change. I don't know how they would go about it because obviously, just like you said, they could get the signatures put on town meeting, but then we need that public. Be on agenda uh, meeting first. As, as always, I'm going to caveat whatever I say with I'm not a lawyer, but my right. reading of the statute is that you would probably hold a public hearing. You would be compelled to hold a public hearing. Right. You are then that that's that's the end of your responsibility. You 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 present your report to the board of selectmen in town meeting, and that report can be positive in favor of the proposed change. It can be negative that you don't feel that it's, and, and the Board of Selectmen has the ultimate authority on what goes on the warrant. They could decide not to put it on the warrant, well, right. the but then, but the then, they, then the, the petitioner could come in with, if it's, a, if it's an annual town meeting, just 10 signatures, I think 
for a special, it's more like a hundred that you have yeah, to get yeah. to put it on the warrant if the select board is not in favor right. of it so, initially. So but, that, but these, but those are all the legal processes that these the folks. The course would be is we could say we're not going to hold a public hearing. They would get the ten signatures for the next town meeting. <coughs> they got those. Would have to go on. I'm not sure you're in a position to say you will not hold a public hearing once it's been transmitted to you by the board of selectmen. Because we just did that for we just did that for we just did that for Bob Decker. So we put him on for a year. Well, I know it. I don't know if the selectmen can do that or not. I won't say. We'll look at the statute. Yeah. We'll talk with Dick and town council if need be. But just wanted to give you a heads up that that's. Uh, I my folder there. I was trying to avoid it. Dick was concerned that it hadn't shown up on the agenda and asked me to raise it. So, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn. Second. 920. All in favor? Aye. Aye.